Dan Lieberman. I'm a professor of human evolutionary biology at Harvard University, and I study the evolution of the human body. And one of my major interests is the evolution of running and how we ran barefoot. Well, I'm interested in human evolution in general and why and how the human body is the way it is. And uh, I'm actually originally a skull guy, so I work on the evolution of the head a lot. And years ago, I was doing some experiments, and we were we, we came up with some data which showed that humans have some special capabilities for stabilizing the head, and that these capabilities probably are about two million years old. And so from that, I got interested in, in how and why humans started running in the first place, and that led to uh, a considerable amount of research on the evolution of running. And so a colleague of mine, Dennis Bramble, and I published a paper in Nature in 2004, which kind of started the whole thing off, in which we argued that human running is, endurance running is about two million years old, and that human body is really designed for long distance running. We have features from our, literally from our heads to our toes that make us incredibly good at long distance running. The basic question we asked in that paper was, was how do people run barefoot? Because if, if humans have been running for two million years, obviously for most of that time we were barefoot. Mm -hmm. and, and when we weren't barefoot, we were wearing very minimal shoes, you know, with essentially no padding, no arch support, no cushioning, uh, none of those those features that we see in the modern shoe, which was really invented only in the late 1970s. Mm -hmm. So it turns out that nobody had actually really looked at the biomechanics and the anatomy and the physiology of barefoot running. The only data that existed was, you know, people, you know, normal, so college students asked to take their shoes off for an experiment. So we started looking at habitual barefoot runners and realized that, that the way in which people who normally run barefoot um, or wear very minimal shoes, that they run actually often in a very different way, a much lighter, more gentle way. Than, than people who wear shoes. So we, so we set out to, fu to figure out what was different about the way they run and also to try to understand the biomechanics uh, to understand why it is that you can run that way. Um, and in a nutshell, what we found was that, um, um, which is not really a surprise to anybody who's been running barefoot, uh, but what we found was that people who run in shoes tend to heel strike, right? Mm -hmm. So they tend to first land on the heel and they have a very, sort of, usually sort of straight knee and a very stiff ankle and they slam into the ground, and, that's what, and that generates this, this sudden collision called a heel strike transient, and that's been well known, so people know this uh, for a long time. But what people didn't appreciate was that the people who run barefoot have to run much softer, they have to run more gently. And they tend to run much flatter, usually either it was called a midfoot strike, where they land sort of in the middle or flat of the foot, or actually more often, I think, on, on the ball of the foot, and then they let the heel down, what we call often a toe-heel-toe -toe run. And and uh, what we showed was that when you run that way, either a, a toe-heel-toe run, a, a forefoot strike, or, a, or a certain kinds of midfoot strikes, you hit the ground really gently, very softly. In fact, there's no collision. You can't even measure the collision if you're doing it properly. So it's actually a very gentle, soft, light way of landing. Mm -hmm. And of course that makes sense because um, it would be uncomfortable to collide in the ground with the, with the heel strike. The, the impact transient that caused by heel strike, if you were barefoot and you hit the ground with heel strike transient, the, the loading of your body at that instant in time, that shock, right, is, can be two to three times your body weight. So if you weigh, you know, 70 kilos, that's, um, you know, can be as much as 300 kilos of body weight, right? Mm -hmm. And the rate at which that loading occurs is phenomenal. It, it, the, the forces rise in your body um, so about 500 body weights a second. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like somebody taking a sledgehammer right, and hitting you on your heel with two or three times your body weight. Um, that's what happens in a heel strike. So if you wear a shoe, that makes it much more comfortable, but the impact is still there. The shoe simply slows that rate of loading, but the magnitude of loading is the same. But if you're barefoot running or wearing a minimal shoe and you, and you don't land that way and you land more with, on the ball of your foot or more flat, two things happen. The physics is a little bit complicated, but it's, it's, worth, it's worth understanding. So one is that the amount of your body that comes to a dead stop is much smaller. Um, so uh, what, what, if I'm running, right, and, if I, and I'm in the air, right, and my body hits the ground, the, the, the proportion, not, not, you know, my body comes to a dead stop, right, but not all of my body stops at that moment. Only part of my body stops, right? The rest of my body is still falling, right? So, so it turns out that the proportion of your body that stops we call the effective mass. And in a heel strike, the effective mass turns out to be basically your, your foot and your lower leg. It's about 6 to 8% of your body. Um, 
which is a fair amount of your body that comes to a dead stop, right? So there's a mass, and force is a mass times acceleration, so there's an acceleration. So there's a big exchange of, of energy between, between the part of your body that stops and the rate at which it stops. In a forefoot strike or a midfoot strike, the part of your body that stops is actually just your foot. So that's about you know, about one, one and a half percent of your body mass. So you've already decreased the effective mass involved in the collision by four to six times. And the other thing is that you're, 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 the rate at which it stops is much, is much slower. Right? So if you think about it, if you, if you were to jump off a chair or jump off some stairs or jump off anything, right, how do you land? You land on the ball of your foot, right? and, you, and you bend your, your hips, you bend your knees, you bring your ankle down. All that is called compliance. That's the, that's the opposite of stiffness. It's, it's, you're slowing the rate at which your body comes to a stop. So when you land in this kind of forefoot, midfoot strike fashion, the rate at which your body slows at that instantaneous moment of collision is much, much lower. So the, the combined effect is that less of your body comes to a dead stop, and it comes to a stop over a much longer period of time, so it's completely impact-free, it's collision-free. So you can run on the hardest surfaces in the world, it can be asphalt, concrete, bed and nails, whatever you want to run on, right? And you'll run in a much less impactful, collision, collisional way than if you were running the way you would normally do if you're wearing a high-heeled shoe. Most people, if you have them take their shoes off, I and mean, we've done experiments, we've asked people to run either barefoot or in minimal shoes, and we've actually looked at how they change their, the way they run. Most people will automatically, on their own, transition to more barefoot style. And that makes sense. It, it simply hurts to land on your heel. I mean, most people are not idiots, right? And they, they realize that it's painful. And their body naturally moves them into a more barefoot style. And I think if you actually go barefoot, you transition more rapidly because you get all that that proprioception, the sensory information from your foot. Right? Um, that said, if you've been a heel striker your whole life and you want to switch to this kind of running, you can't just suddenly decide, wake up one morning and say, I'm going to run with a barefoot style. If you do, you will be extremely unhappy, right? Because it takes a lot more strength. In fact, we can, we can talk about why it is that, 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 that heel striking became popular in the first place. But, but, but the reason it takes more strength is that you need to use your calf muscles to low, particularly to lower your, your, your ankle. Because right? when you, if you land on the ball of your foot, or even land in the midfoot, you're still having to use the calf muscles to control the, the rate at which your, 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 your ankle is coming down. That's called dorsiflexion. And that's a, what we call an eccentric contraction. So your, your calf muscles are actually firing as the Achilles tendon and the, and the calf muscles are lengthening. And those are the contractions that really hurt, right? And, and most people with heel strike don't have to do that. So they have, tend to have very weak calf muscles. Um, they use them just for, for concentric contractions. And they're, they're, they're just not ready to do that. So if you were to go out and barefoot run five miles for the first time you know, tomorrow, your calf muscles will be screaming in agony. You'll make a calf muscle spasm. You'll probably get Achilles tendonitis. I mean, you'll be extremely deeply and profoundly unhappy or wish you'd never tried it in the first place. So, so if you're going to transition, it's a good idea to take your shoes off and just find out how your body naturally runs without, without shoes. But if you transition, do it really slowly and gradually. You know, don't do more than a, you know, a kilometer or a mile at the first time. You know, don't build up by more than 10% a week. Go very, very slowly. Let your calf muscles strengthen. Let your Achilles tendon uh, you know, adjust to that different kind of work. You also using the foot muscles a lot. I mean, most people have incredibly weak feet, you know, pathetically weak feet, right? And and again, if you heel toe run, if you heel strike, you don't really have to use your foot muscles that much. But if you toe heel toe run, right, you have to again also use all those muscles in your foot to control the arch of your foot. Now the good news is that this will strengthen your foot, but the bad news is that your foot's probably weak, so that it takes time to build up that strength. So you have to be Know, really, really conservative and build up strength because you know the one thing you don't want to do is hurt yourself. And the problem is that the the data on running injury are just dreadful. Right? Yeah. And there's no agreed upon standards on how to assess injury, how to measure injury. Um, people assess their own injury sometimes. In some studies, they have you know physicians or physical therapists assess injury. I think that the, the range of, of, of estimates vary from about 30% to 70% of, of habitual runners tend to get repetitive stress injuries in a given year. But 
certainly it's, it's, whatever the figure, it's an unacceptable level, right? A lot of people are getting injured. Because running is the most fundamental way in which humans exercise. It's, it's the basis for most vigorous exercise. I mean, it's, it's part of who we are as a species. I mean, uh, I think that humans evolved to run millions of years ago, probably in order to hunt, right? It was, it was the way in which our ancestors were able to, to, to hunt animals before the invention of, of projectile technologies like the bow and arrow, let alone the gun and, and yeah. things like that. So, so, you know, our bodies are designed for running. There's a reason we're really good at it. Um, and, and most of the sports that we, we really enjoy, be it jogging or running, but also sports like football and basketball are basically running with a ball. I mean, it's, you know, running is, is part of what makes us special as a species. So we love running. And so people will, people will always keep running. Um, uh, and runners, of course, are like, like, like many athletes. They're, they're impassioned. They love what they're doing. And so they'll do whatever they can to keep running. One of the silliest critiques I've heard about the barefoot running movement is that it's a fad, right? I've heard various so-called experts say that this is a fad. And you know, that just makes me laugh as an evolutionary biologist because if it's a fad, it's about a two million year old fad, right? I mean, it's the modern running shoe that's clearly the fad. And I think people are just going back to the way our bodies were designed. Well, to me, I think the, the, there are several key aspects to the way in which barefoot runners naturally run. Um, the first is that um, they use the foot in a natural way, as a, 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 in, in a different way than a heavily encased, you know, springy shoe. So, so for me, the essential characteristics of a more minimal shoe are that it doesn't have a, a, a large arch support, that the sole is very stiff. So if you pick up a shoe and you kind of twist it around its long axis, right, if it's very stiff, it's not very minimal, right? Uh, but if it's flexible, then it's much more minimal shoe, right? Um, look in the, inside the shoe. If there's a big arch support that supports your arch, you know, that's, that's not a minimal shoe. And then finally, um, you know, how much of a heel is there? If there's a really big, huge heel, again, you're not wearing a minimal shoe. Again, I don't work just on running. I mentioned yeah. the evolution of the human body in general, but we're still doing a lot of work on running, and we're trying to figure out um, many other aspects of running. We're not just, you know, the paper we just published in Nature was on the initial collision of running in barefoot running, but, but there's a lot of other things that are different about barefoot running and shod running through other parts of gait and other parts of the body. So we're investigating, we're investigating sort of other aspects of the biology of running and how, how, how you do it differently with and without shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also working on injury because we're, we're, we're trying to ask the question, you know, does, do the differences that we observe between barefoot running and shod running, are they related to the kinds of injuries that runners often experience? Um, so we're trying to do some injury studies. And then we're looking at a whole variety of other aspects of the body, from throwing to chewing, that are also sort of relevant to, again, the larger question of how and why is the human body the way it is. So many people get sort of worried about what they have to do, right, or what they're, and they want to know what they're supposed to do. But ultimately, I think the movement's really about people doing what they want to do. Um, you know, for most of human evolutionary history, people ran not because they wanted to, but because they had to. It was part of life. It was, it was necessary. And we live in a very weird world now and where, where we don't have to run for any reason at all. We can sit behind our computers all day long, get into our cars, drive to work. Um, and the reason we run is because it makes us feel good, and we run because we choose to. And, and, and I think that choice is more than just the fact that we choose to run, but also how we choose to run. And you know, people should run the way they want to. If they want to wear high heel shoes and heel strike, fine, let them go ahead and do that. But if they want to try something different, um, let them try that too, and, and they might really enjoy it. My, my guess is that if you, the people who try it will, will really appreciate it, and it might be, might be good for them. But um, but it's really all a choice, and I think too many people are worried about what they're supposed to do, and I think what we should really focus more on is what we like to do, because ultimately it's about having fun, staying healthy, avoiding getting injured, um, and, uh, and you know, enjoying life.